Acts chapter 19. And it was that while Apollo was at Corinto, Paolo, having passed through the upper country, came to Epheso and found certain disciples. And he said to them, Did ye receive Holy Spirit when ye believed? And they said to him, Nay, we did not so much as hear whether Holy Spirit was given. And he said, Into what then were ye baptized? And they said, Into your Hanan's baptism. And Paulo said, Your Hanan baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying to the people that they should believe on him that should come after him, that is, on Yeshua. And when they heard this, they were baptized into the name of the Lord Yeshua. And when Paulo had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Spirit came on them, and they spoke with tongues and prophesied. And they were, in all, about twelve men. And he entered into the synagogue and spoke boldly for the space of three months, reasoning and persuading as to the things concerning the kingdom of the God. But when some were hardened and disobedient, speaking evil of the way before the multitude, he departed from them and separated the disciples, reasoning daily in the school of Turanos. And this continued for the space of two years, so that all they that dwelt in Asia heard the word of the Lord, both Yehudim and Greeks. And powers not before reached, the God was doing these by the hands of Paulo, insomuch that to the sick were carried away from his skin handkerchiefs or aprons, and the diseases departed from them, and the evil spirits went out. But certain also of the strolling Yehudim, exorcists, took upon them to name over them that had the evil spirits the name of the Lord Yeshua, saying, I adjure you by Yeshua, whom Paulo preacheth. And there were seven sons of one Skewa, a Yehudi, a chief priest, who did this. And the evil spirit answered and said to them, Yeshua I know. And Paulo, I know, but who are ye? And the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them and mastered both of them and prevailed against them so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. And this became known to all, both Yehudim and Greeks that dwelt at Epheso, and fear fell upon them all. And the name of the Lord Yeshua was magnified. Many also of them that had believed came, confessing and declaring their deeds. And substantial numbers of those having practiced magical arts brought their books together and burned them in the sight of all. And they counted the price of them and found it five myriads of silver. So mightily grew the word of the Lord and prevailed. Now, after these things were ended, Paulo purposed in the Spirit, when he had passed through Macedonia and Achaia, to go to Yerushalem, saying, After I have been there, I must also see Rome. And having sent into Macedonia, Two of them that served to him, Demoteo and Erasto, he himself stayed in Asia for a while. And about that time there arose no small stir concerning the way, for a certain man named Dermodrio, a silversmith, who made silver shrines of Artemis, brought no little business to the craftsmen, whom he gathered together with the workmen of like occupation, and said, 
Sirs, ye know that by this business we have our wealth, and ye see and hear that not alone at Ephesus, but almost throughout all Asia, this Paulo hath persuaded and turned away much people, saying that they are no gods that are made with hands. And not only is there danger that this our trade come into disrepute, but also that the temple of the great goddess Artemis be made of no account, and that she should even be deposed from her magnificence, whom all Asia and the inhabited earth worshippeth. And when they heard this, they were filled with wrath, and cried out, saying, Great is Artemis of the Ephesioi. And the city was filled with the confusion, and they rushed with one accord into the theatre, having seized Gaiu and Aristarco, men of Macedonia, Paulo's companions in travel. And when Paulo was minded to enter into the people, the disciples were allowing him not, and certain also of the Asiarchai, being his friends, sent to him and besought him not to adventure himself into the theatre. Some therefore cried one thing, and some another, for the assembly was in confusion, and the more part knew not for what reason they were come together. And they brought Alexandro out of the multitude, the Yehudim putting him forward. And Alexandro beckoned with the hand, and would have made a defense to the people. But when they perceived that he was a Yehudi, all with one voice, about the space of two hours, cried out, Great is Artemis of the Ephesioi! And when the town clerk had quieted the multitude, he saith, Ye men of Epheso, what man is there who knoweth not that the city of the Ephesioi is temple keeper of the great Artemis, and of the image fallen from Zeus? Therefore these things being without contradiction, Ye ought to be quiet, and to do nothing rash, for ye have brought hither these men, who are neither robbers of temples nor blasphemers of our female god. If therefore de Mertrio and the craftsmen that are with him have a matter against any man, the courts are open, and there are proconsuls, let them accuse one another. But if ye seek anything about other matters, it shall be settled in the legal assembly. For indeed we are in danger to be accused concerning this day's riot, there being no cause for it, and concerning it we shall not be able to give account of this concourse. And when he had thus spoken, he dismissed the assembly.